YouTube, what is good? It's your man Ribs from Doing Film Things. Every single week I drop a new video about film photography. So if that's your thing, definitely go ahead and subscribe. This week we are talking about the Essential Film Holder, one of the newest products that I've purchased recently. And its whole purpose is to help you scan your negatives much more efficiently and with much better results. So on my last video that you can see up here, I actually talked about using a toilet roll as a way to mask my negatives for 35 millimeter while scanning. You get really good results with this. It blocks the light, keeps the negatives flat, but it's a toilet roll. You know, it's not really the most finesse solution. And also it's kind of annoying. It's a bit janky, you know, not ideal. So in that video, someone actually commented about the fact that I should take a look at the essential film holder. No idea what this product was. I couldn't find really any information except for the main website where you actually went to go purchase it. So I went on that website, read some details, and I was kind of impressed. The website itself isn't very impressive. It all looks very amateur and it kind of put me off a bit, but you read through the details and it really shows that the creator really thought through this issue and came up with what looks like a really good solution. On top of that, Pushing Film, one of my favorite YouTube channels here, actually did a review on it as well. You can see that link right there. And basically, his review gave me confidence to go ahead and invest in this one. So, although I had already purchased it by the time I saw that video, it made me happy that what I did purchase looked to be kind of a good idea. So here's the product. It's this right here, as you see. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's kind of like a good size. So generally, this product is obviously plastic, which makes it very lightweight. It's fairly compact as well, you know, it's not too big, not too dense. And it just kind of fits in the space very well. It looks like it's well made and it feels like it's well made, which I really appreciate. When it comes to film photography, things that are plastic are always spoken down on. So I was kind of worried about this, but I think plastic is the perfect material for something like this, just because, you know, it doesn't really need to be anything fancy or anything overly expensive. As long as it's sturdy and well built, it should do the job just fine. You can tell after playing with this product that it was built by somebody who knows what they're doing. So how does this product work? It's pretty straightforward. You actually just put it directly on top of a light pad, turn on your light pad light, and it's ready to go. You don't have to assemble it, you don't have to build it, you don't have to do anything. If you do have the 35 millimeter version, that's the mess that you'll see on top. And if you also order the combo product that has the 120 mil holder as well, you'll see that one on the bottom. And so if you wanna use the 120 one, you do have to remove the 35 millimeter one by unscrewing the bolts on the surface of the product. Either way, whichever one you choose, you literally just have to take your dry film and shove it through one side and have it come out the other. There's very, very thin slots in the interior of the mask that allow you to slide the film directly under. And that thinness is exactly what helps keep the film flat. So as long as you can slot your film into there, it should stay pretty stable. And then at that point, you just kind of push the film through very lightly. There are no knobs, there's no anything. You literally just push it with your hand and it's very smooth. It shouldn't, there shouldn't be any resistance or anything like that. If there is, then you did something wrong and perhaps you slid the negative under that plastic inner mask that's in there as well. None of this stuff will scratch your negatives though because it all is plastic, so it's very nice that you don't have to worry about that. Assuming you're doing everything right here, which again is very simple, you should be able to get a roll of 35 millimeter scanned very, very quickly in basically a matter of minutes. A roll of 120 will be even faster given that there's fewer shots to scan. One of kind of the unsung features of this particular product is the diffusion mask on the bottom. This is actually an extra layer of semi-transparent plastic that will soften the light from your LED light pad even further. So if you have a very harsh light or a very strong one, this will help to really even it out so that your negative gets illuminated very evenly across its surface. Using the regular version of this product, you will not get much of a film border. You definitely won't be able to see the numbers or anything like that in full. However, you will get kind of a little edge, a little black edge around it. That's enough for me personally. I don't really care about having the numbers or anything else, but if you do want that, you can special order the masks as well. Um, you do have to claim those separately when you're submitting your order, but the person who makes this product will create one of those for you. So in terms of changes, what do I wish was different on this product? Honestly, there really is nothing. Um, everything is very simple and it's very intuitive, which is exactly what I want from something like a film holder. The only thing I will kind of request is that the actual grips on the bottom of the film holder, I wish they were grippier. Honestly, I don't know if that's a word, but um, they do slide around a bit on top of your LED light pad. This isn't a big issue, but if you're trying to get really, really perfect, consistent results and you accidentally bump it or you move it while moving the negative, then it might slide around and kind of ruin your composition and you have to reset it. But again, nothing major. It's not going to destroy your experience. So a couple things to note about this product. Um, it is very intuitive, as I mentioned, but I think there's some things that it's probably worth me mentioning before you use this product if you decide to get one. So when scanning the first or the last image of your negatives, 
you do want to ensure that you leave the image within the film mask and don't let it kind of sag in the middle. Um, I'll show you what I mean here. If you put your negative directly in kind of at the edge, it will hold itself up nicely and won't sag really. But if you pull it out and it's not sitting entirely within the rectangle and being held up on all sides, it might sag and that definitely won't give you a good scan. So just keep that in mind. If you're scanning whole rolls, this will be less of an issue because you'll have more distance on either side. But if you have some negatives that you already cut like I did, you will run into this problem with each single strip. Um, but it's not a problem. It's kind of something you just need to be aware of. This product does work just fine with cut negatives. That's definitely not what I'm trying to say. Um, ideally, you want to use a whole strip because then you can not only move very fast, but then you don't really run with the issue of having the negative sag anywhere because there's enough weight on either side supporting it. But if your negatives are cut, definitely pay attention to that. One thing I think is very important is to know that this product works best in low light. So the room that you're in shouldn't be kind of overly lit or have tons of little light sources all over the place. This, the mask on the actual product is not very three dimensional. You know, it's not thick. It doesn't have a height to it. So it's not going to effectively block any light that's around the room if there's something very, very strong. So I recommend you do this in with the lights off or in a room that has not too many lights or maybe far away from the light source in the room. That way you don't have all this kind of straight light coming in. When I talk about the toilet roll in my previous video, that actually works really well at blocking light because it's so tall. So it doesn't really let light come in from all over the place, except for just a little bit of an exposure on top between the lens and the top of the toilet roll. Here, there's no height. So you will have enough of a gap between your lens and that, and therefore you need to account for that. But it's not a problem um, if you don't scan in kind of a very bright room or next to a window or something like that. One interesting thing is that these negatives are basically being held up by gravity and just by the physical limitation of the space within the holder. That's sufficient to give you like nice and flat negatives. I am curious to see how this compares to something like the negative supply holder that actually has a bit of tension on it because tension really helps pull the negative and keep it nice and straight. Whereas in this one, there is none of that particular force. Therefore, theoretically, your negative isn't as perfectly flat as it could be with one of the other holders. I haven't tried that myself though, so that's kind of just a thought that I have. Lastly, the negatives can be a little finicky to get in the very thin slot. As I mentioned, that thin slot is key to ensuring a good scanning experience because it doesn't allow for room for your negative to move, which is what gets you to that flat surface of the negative. However, when you're slotting the film in, sometimes you might miss the slot and you kind of have to play around with it. It's a little bit annoying. It's definitely not a huge problem and it doesn't happen all the time, especially if your negative is nice and flat. But if your negative is not perfectly flat, you might have to wedge your finger kind of under the holder and potentially place it uh, and kind of guide it in. Because if not, um, you might just kind of jab against the entry and it's never really going to go in smoothly. One thing to note is if you do not have a copy stand, you should be just fine. You can still use this product with a tripod or even handheld. You know, if you kind of, if you don't have a tripod, you can hold your camera over it get steady, maybe turn on image stabilization, and you should get a clean scan, especially if you bump your ISO, although not too much. With a tripod, of course, you can do it and get very, very steady, long exposures if necessary, but ultimately a copy stand is by far the most convenient solution. So if you're thinking about investing in one, you probably should. All right, so all in all, do I recommend this product? My answer is yes, without question. I really love how this product works. It does what it's supposed to do and it does it very simply. There's not really any guesswork here. There's no finicky anything. If you break this, it's because you literally smash it. Otherwise, I don't think there's any way to kind of mess this product up. And price-wise, it's fairly affordable. I paid right around 100 pounds for it. I forget the exact price, but you can look it up on the website here. And it really feels like you're getting exactly what you pay for. It's well-built, it works well, and it's not overly expensive, but it's also not super cheap and flimsy. I really love this middle ground here. This is exactly what happens when you get competition in kind of the film photography market. All these cool products pop up and basically us the consumers get to decide what actually survives and what's worth buying. And this one I think is definitely one that's worth buying. All right, y'all, what do you think about this product? Have you used it? Are you thinking about using it? Let me know in the comments. I find this to be a really good solution, but I'm curious if you think there's a better one or if you think this one is very intriguing. Talk to me. So that's what I got for you this week, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already because I talk about products like this, other ones, film photography, everything. Thanks, y'all. Peace.